my name is Sas Rani. Um, today I'll be talking about Grandstream, GW, and Cloud, and uh, show you how to set up a, a Wi Fi network using it, and a quick demo after that as well. So, first of all, uh, let's have a look at the Grandstream access point series. Uh, there's about 10 different models, but I have handpicked these three particular devices, uh, which would be an ideal pick for in certain situations. Uh, first, we have the GWN7602. This is the Grandstream's compact Wi-Fi access point. Uh, it uh, supports up to 80 Wi-Fi clients and um, have about 100 meter coverage. It is ideal to be used in a home or a small office environment. It also has three inbuilt uh, Ethernet ports, so you can connect your uh, IP phones, computers, or any device you want. Next, we have the GWN7660. Uh, uh, this is one of the enterprise grade access points. Uh, this has this supports a lot more Wi-Fi clients and has a wider coverage than the GWN7602. Also, uh, this can be used as an embedded controller, which means uh, you can use this to control locally control up to 50 brand same access points. Finally, the next one is uh, GWN7630LR. Uh, Main difference between this and the other one is uh, this has a waterproof casing and heat resistant shield. So uh, you can use this outside as well. So ideally in a car dealership or hotels, schools, or any environment. So uh, what is GWM Cloud? Um, GWN Cloud is an enterprise grade cloud Wi Fi management platform for Grandstream access points. Uh, with this, you can easily manage and uh, check real time reports for the entire Wi Fi network across multiple locations. So uh, let's uh, look at uh, key benefits of using Grandstream Cloud. Like I said, it is super easy to use. Um, you can easily add uh, Grandstream access points just by scanning the barcode from your mobile app, which is available on both iPhone and Android. Or you can just enter it manually on the web browser as well. And there is no limit on how many access points or how many network sites you can create. So virtually there's no limitation on that. And normally if you are deploying multiple access points on a site, you'll have to log into each access point and configure it manually, which is so boring and would take a lot of time. But with Gradstream Cloud, uh, you can simply configure the network and with few clicks of buttons, you can add hundreds of branch uh, access points to that network. Also, uh, Grandstream uh, GWN Cloud is hosted on GW, uh, Amazon Web Services, so you get your high reliability from there as well. Um, to sign up, uh, you just simply need to go to www.gwn dot cloud and create your free account and um you could go from there so uh let's have a quick demo of the uh gwn cloud so uh you need to go to www.gwn gwn dot cloud and over here if you don't have an account you can sign up here enter your email address username and password and you should, you'll get a confirmation email within five minutes. You can sign up after that. I have already created the, um, create my account and configured a few networks. So let me sign up my account here. There you go. 
if you have used GradFrame uh, devices before, uh, you can see a familiar user interface. On the dashboard, you can see a quick snapshot of all your GradStream access points and all the networks that you have available. In this case, one access point. And uh, you can see the band, you can quickly see a, a bandwidth usage, how many clients uh, are registered and top basis IDs and whatnot. And under network list, you can see a list of networks. So uh, our default is the default uh, network that GrandStream Cloud has, and I've configured two other networks over here. And under AP list, you can see the list of APs you have on all their networks. So um, let's quickly go into the site that I've configured already. So you go into network and we're going to alloy site one. Again, under overview, it's similar to the dashboard. You can see a quick snapshot of your of this particular network and how many access points, clients, and whatnot. And if you go into access points, um, under summary, again, it's just a quick snapshot of the access points. Under status, uh, you can see a list of all the access points and um, good thing here is, um, say you want to troubleshoot anything on your Wi-Fi network, you can simply go to status, debug, and take a packet capture or do a ping or trace route uh, straight through the uh, Google uh, GWN cloud as well, which is uh, really easy when it comes to troubleshooting. So you don't have to go on site or uh, get team access or anything, simply can do it from GWN Cloud. And under configuration, uh, you can see the access point I've already configured here. And if you want to add another access point, you can simply click the add button and enter the MAC address and the password you can find on the back of the access point. I'll get to this later. Um, let's Go into configuration. Over here, you can uh, configure your IP details and bandwidth details for, for 2.4G and 5G. And under SSIDs, uh, again, just a summary is a quick snapshot of all the SSIDs you have. Um, excuse me. Under configuration, uh, you can see the SSIDs I've configured. You can configure multiple SSIDs. Um, I've configured one here, which is LOA Wi-Fi. If you go into that, uh, you can see the name and the security mode and the pre-shared password stuff. Also, if you go into device membership, you can see how many access points have configured with this uh, SSID. At the moment, we only have one. Under clients, um, you can see all the connected clients here. At the moment, I have an iPhone connected to this. Uh, or here, if you want, you can do multiple things. You can uh, limit the bandwidth for that particular client or even block them. So if you want to limit the bandwidth, we can enable bandwidth rules. And for that particular client, it's limited for the LA Wi Fi. Everything, say, do a 10 meg uplink and 30 meg downlink. So that's quite useful if you have a, a users using the uh, network for downloads or stuff, or you can just limit them from here straight away. Um, over here we have Captive Portal. I have not configured the Captive Portal, uh, ca Captive Portal on this network, but uh, with Captive Portal, what it, how what it is is um, it re when you uh, join the uh, this Wi-Fi network, it will redirect you to a special page that you uh, you need to log in before you grant access to the network. 
So usually you see this in um, hotels or in airports and even some cafes. So it's pretty straightforward and easy to configure. So if I go into splash page, you can see create a splash page. Um, you can upload your own logo and you can select the login methods if it's free or uh, radius server or just using your social media accounts here as well. And you can see how it will look on your mobile or on your computer. It has a few options. You can have advertisements playing. So it's good for a hotel if you have any sort of uh, promotions or even on a cafe, you can just have them played before they log into the network. Um, under radio, this is where you configure the uh, frequency for your 2.4G and 5G. I have not made any changes here. I kept it default. And under access control, uh, this is where you can, if you want to block some users, you can just simply add the MAC address here and block them from connecting to your network. And under time policies, um, over here you can specify a particular time that Wi Fi clients need to connect back to the network, uh, say, we go there, say every 30 minutes, then uh, they'll get kicked out from the network and they can log back in after a particular period, particular cycle. I guess this, this will be used in hotels or airports or some server uh, situation like that. And over here, you can uh, configure your bandwidth rules can see the bandwidth uh, rule that I configured earlier for that uh, client is the 10 meg and 30 meg. And also have a bandwidth rule configured here during office hours uh, has a 10 uh, meg uplink and 20 meg downlink for all the users, which is connected to the Alloy Wi-Fi network. You can have it for, you can schedule it anytime as well. On the security, uh, over here you can specify your in, uh, inbound and outbound rules. You can block any particular protocols and allow or deny the usual security firewall stuff here. Same with inbound, you can uh, allow deny uh, particular protocols and um, just forward them to IPs and whatnot. And if you go into system, this is this where you configure your general uh, settings of the access points and maintenance. And over here, you can configure uh, alerts, email alerts. So say you wanna configure email alerts if any access points goes offline or it reaches particular throughput, you can configure them here and it will send you an email. So it it's, makes it quite easy for you to manage this Wi-Fi network and how to uh, concern, uh, continuously monitoring it. Um, that's simply what I've configured here. Um, let's see how easy it is to add an uh, access point to this network. Uh, to do that, you can either go to configuration and click add from here, or you can use your mobile app. Uh, let me use my mobile app. Uh, let me see if I can share my screen. Go. You should be able to see my screen here. And if I go into the Grandstream Cloud app here, let me close everything first and look back in again. You can see from the beginning how it works.
There we go. Beautiful. And if you log into the Grandstream Cloud app, similar to the dashboard, you can see all your devices and access points here. And to add an additional access point, you just go to access point and press that plus button on the left top and just need to scan the uh, serial barcode at the back of the screen. So simply here. There you go. Added that and let's name it Alloy P2. If on. Now, if I go back into the default network, so all the new access points will be automatically get added to here to the default network, then you can move into the any network you have. I just added this one. Say if you want to add a 10 more, you just need to scan that code and just add them here. You can assign them to the sites you have. So let's assign it to the LOA site one, which I have the other access point as well. Well, there you go. You can see both the access points here, and you can do your usual configuration if you want to uh, configure a static IP. But all the other settings that I've configured earlier will automatically get added to this uh, access point. Just to uh, confirm, you can go into configuration and for here, if you go into device membership, you can see the second access points I added there. Um, that is pretty much it on this demo. Also, um, uh, let me touch on this one as well. Um, you can easily upgrade firmwares uh, using Grandstream Cloud. Uh, just select this and you can schedule it to upgrade. So this is the second access point I added. I believe, yep. Let's um, upgrade to the latest version. Uh, scheduled later tonight, say around 10 p.m. PM. There you go. So, so it will automatically. Uh, I have scheduled that here, and it will get executed um, around 10 p.m. today. I, I did the same thing for the other uh, access point earlier, which was yesterday, and it was successfully upgraded to the latest version. And under reports, you can generate reports on your Wi-Fi network. I've just um generated one earlier. Uh, you can just get um, all the statistics of the uh, network and bandwidth usage and whatnot. And you, you can get it to um, generate uh, daily or weekly or whatnot and send it to your email address. I have generated one earlier. Let me see if I can open it. So this is what it would look like, but you will see a lot more information when you have a lot more clients on your network. You can see the bandwidth usage and how many clients are connected to your network and stuff. Um, that is pretty much it. Uh, do you guys have any uh, question that I can help you today? Uh, I have a question, Sass, if you could answer one for me. Sure, go for it. Um, how many uh, SSIDs can you put on per AP? Ooh, good question. Uh, I I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, I don't. Um. I feel how to check that. I know you can uh, assign multiple because I did assign it earlier. Yeah. Um, two. Let's quickly configure. I think it's sixteen. Yes. Right. Okay. Um. I think. Let me just double check.
And then the next question I would have, that the normal yep. hotel environment these days are obviously want their own VLANs per room so that they can, you know, Chromecast and so forth do their TVs. Has yep. it, does it handle the v, that multiple VLANs, like hundreds of VLANs well, the controller? Uh, you can configure VLANs here. Um, yeah, it so, does. It can. Yeah. yeah. And just confirming, guys, so it's 32 SSIDs in total, <coughs> but 16 per radio. So 16 for the 2.4 gigahertz radio and 16 for the 5 gigahertz radio. And that's per AP. Per AP. Yeah, that's, that's heaps. And there's no limitations on how many VLANs or APs you can put on the controller per client? No, so no there's, there's no limitation. Yeah, and obviously it's limited to like 496 VLANs, which is yep. your standard. Yeah, yeah. VLAN limits. All right, no, that's wonderful. That's all I had. Thanks very much. So is there any other questions? Or? Yeah, I have a question. Um, I've been installing the Wi-Fi access points, say, on a local LAN and then transferring them to the cloud. And sometimes they do transfer OK. Other times they transfer with loss of static IP. And other right. times they don't transfer at all. Should, should I be just adding them to the cloud straight away? Because what I usually do is set up say a master and multiple slaves and then transfer yep. the group. Right, okay. So uh, with cloud, uh, you don't have to configure masters on locally. You can uh, generally manage everything from cloud. So I would say configure everything on cloud first and you can just go to the site and simply connect the device and that's all. Okay. Yeah, because when, you, when you're configuring one as the master, on the local network, that becomes your controller for that network, and then you're transferring it to the cloud, which becomes a controller. So you, mm. you're better off just doing it on the cloud. Um, yeah, from, from yeah, 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 yeah. All right, not a problem. There was two other questions in the chat there, so if you want to answer those, um, let me see. So the priority for users, um, I believe I saw that here. Um, let's try that. You can obviously limit the uh, bandwidth for particular uses, but in terms of priority. I will have to check that and get back to you on if we can uh, prioritize particular users or the others from here. No, it does not support multi LAN, uh, so you cannot do uh, load balancing on the access points here. Yeah, so the, the access points aren't routers, so you'd still have your standard router connecting to your to your internet. These devices are purely the Wi-Fi network, 
So you'd still have whatever router that you or firewall that you might utilize, and that's where you'd have your your WAN connectivity. It's not done via these APs. You can do that on the Grandstream router, that is the GWN 7000. You can configure uh, load balancing and uh, multi WAN support on those. Is that configurable in the cloud too? Uh, you cannot add uh, routers onto the cloud. This is just for the uh, Grandstream uh, access point. So routers, you have to configure it manually. So what about access control to the management test? So the question from Wei Ho is um, wondering whether you can limit access. So when have configure multiple admins, but give them specific access to certain networks that you configured for your customers? Um, I don't think you can do that for Wi-Fi networks. Um... I will have to get. Uh, uh, and, uh, uh, we're talking about the actual cloud management portal. So if we configure multiple logins for this, right? Okay. Um, admins. Users, there you go. So if I go into users, um, you guys can see my screen still, yeah? Yep. Okay, perfect. So let's see. Let's add another one. And, um, and platform administrator, network administrator. Okay. Yes, you can. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you can give them access to particular uh, networks. Our last question there, Sass, is the one from Mel. So in Cap regards to the captive portal, can we limit that to certain users? Um, I believe you can limit that to certain SSIDs. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't think you can uh, limit that to particular users. If so, you should be able to see that here. I think you can. Um, in, um, I'm just reading the manual. There's stuff in there about radius authentication. So you might have username, passwords, that kind of stuff you can set it up with the captive a portal where you can have or maybe you can just have whitelisting mac addresses that don't need to hit it i think you can do that right okay um uh sorry about that i'm not 100 percent sure on that one um um according to adam it's possible but i'll have to look into that and i'll get back to you now Um, I think that is all. Is there any other questions that I can help you today? Yep, I think that's all. All right, thank you guys. Uh, have a good afternoon. Thank you.